Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. We are at the SDN and NFV World Congress here in The Hague in the Netherlands. And I'm talking with Inma Rodriguez, who is Head of Core Cloud and OSS at Ericsson. Inma, welcome. Thank you. Let's start with this. I want to talk about becoming a digital service provider, a DSP. What's driving that, what the needs are for it, and how the evolution seems to be taking place. So can we start with this? After an awful lot of hype, 5G is happening now. It's becoming real. Given that, how important is the NFV and core network? Well, Ericsson has already 19 live networks in 5G. So I just say it is happening. And actually the deployment of 5G is happening much faster than we had anticipated. But 5G is not just radio. The area where I work is core network, very important for 5G. And the key thing for core network is that we need to evolve it so that we can handle all the different traffic cases, the use cases that 5G is bringing us. So we need to adapt to the new 5G. Okay, so you've got 19 cases in point that we can talk about, not all 19 of them, but let's take your aggregated experience from that. What have you learnt based on the 5G contracts and work that you are doing? Well, first of all, uh, I think we need to uh, have a working NFBI, that NFB is extremely important as a first step in the network transformation. It allows you to scale, it allows you to handle different types of traffic and, and automation and orchestration allows you to do the service introduction and the operations much faster. So you need to have that ready in order to evolve into 5G. You need to have an NFBI that can evolve into different geograph geographical sites because you are going to expand closer to the end user. And then you need to change your operations and your business processes as well in order to be able to handle the 5G. Okay, so. You, we'll talk about that in some more detail. Have you found across the use cases you, we've been discussing that there is commonality, that there are things which are the same or are things different in each case? Well, I believe 5G, uh, as a difference to the previous generation, opens is an enabler of new business opportunities with the enterprises. So we believe the service provider is now should be now very active in building an ecosystem with all those enterprises and find those new use cases that we need to handle. So that's the, the trend is to go more for networks that are very specific for enterprise use cases. Sure. OK, moving on. We hear a lot about cloud native as well. Why is cloud native important and why just now? After all, we've only just got OpenStack to work. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, OpenStack will still be there for quite a few years because we will still need it to run the virtualized uh, functions and also in the beginning to also run the containerized functions. Uh, containers, cloud native, what gives you is, is that you decompose the software in, in such a way that it's much more flexible. It allows you to have faster LCM, more automatic LCM, and introduce services as you need them, only as you need them. The edge. The edge seems to be the new battleground. There's a lot going on around it, and exactly where the edge may be or may not be. How can operators make themselves relevant around in the edge? Yeah, well, in order to implement those use cases we mentioned, the enterprise will need specific service with, with certain um, experience for the end user. There's nobody else best positioned than the operator to really understand what they need to do in the network in order to provide that service. So we do see the importance of, of you know communication service provider to establish that edge sites as the entry and point for these new services with enterprises. We talked at the beginning about this being about overall about becoming a digital service provider. How close are we to realizing that and saying this is no longer a CSP, this is no longer a telco, this is a DSP? Yeah, I mean we have done a lot when it comes to technology evolution and we have moved uh, to, to a new network with a new architecture but we still have a long way to go when it comes to the operations. Operations need to change and uh, the, the, the demand for automation, dynamic orchestration is there in order to be more efficient and also we need to change some of the things on how we work towards between the operator and the, and the, and the provider of, of software as we are. So there's definitely a lot of things to do in that, in that area. 
You led me nicely into the next question by mentioning operational matters. Operational changes, as we all know, are always difficult and a challenge. You've seen it within Ericsson and you've seen it elsewhere among your customers. What can you recommend? What can you say about it? Well, there are, there are a number of things that the, um, the operator needs to evolve with when it comes to becoming a digital service provider. I would point out the, um, the way they are organized, like we had different departments for different silos. Now we're going into a more horizontal approach where you need to warranty end-to-end -end service. And uh, also, again, the need of having automated operations with closed loop assurance so that you can adapt your network automatically in, in such a way that your end customer can always receive the best services without any manual operation. So I would say those two are the, the challenges we're seeing now. Okay, Inma Rodriguez, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, it was a pleasure.